8.4, we're graphing rational expressions. When we see rational, it means fractions. So we're looking at fractions. Specifically, we've got fractions with, uh, with X's on the top and the bottom. And before we get started, we want to kind of go over some ground rules. We're going to have to identify holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes um, in order to draw these. So let's look at some rules for how that's going to work. All right. So you're going to have vertical asymptotes and holes. Vertical asymptote when, whoops, the bottom equals zero. So we're looking for where the bottom equals zero. And it's going to be a, a vertical asymptote when the bottom equals zero. It's going to be a hole when the bottom equals zero. And it cancels. So you got to pay attention to the difference. Sometimes the bottom is going to equal zero. Sometimes it's going to cancel. Sometimes it's not. All right. You'll see when we get into some examples. Horizontal asymptotes a little bit harder. You've got to look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. So, you know, check it out. If I had f of x equals 3x squared over 5x to the fourth. When I'm talking about the degree... I'm talking about the biggest exponent. The degree of the top is two, and the degree of the bottom is four. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about degree of the top, degree of the bottom. All right, so if those two numbers are equal, if the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom, then we're gonna have to divide, we're gonna have a horizontal asymptote, and it's gonna look like y equals leading coefficient over leading coefficient. All right, so leading coefficient is just the number in the front. So in this case, in this example, it's going to be 3 over 5. All right, 3 over 5. That's that's pretty much it. Now, the, the, the second one, degree of the top, is less than the degree of the bottom, which is what we have here. It's a little bit easier. There's going to be a horizontal asymptote, and it's just going to be 0. Y equals 0. Oblique. Asymptote means a diagonal asymptote. I don't believe we're going to see any of those today, but that's when the degree of the top is one more than the degree of the bottom. All right. So let's just worry about this. Take a picture of this if you want. You're going to need to pull this up when you do the problems. I don't think you're going to memorize it. Um, if you can memorize it, then great. But we'll need to, you know, we'll need to go back to this. So pull that up right now. I want you to have that, that right next to you so you can see it while we're doing these problems. Okay. So number one, identify holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptote. All right. So, so what we really are going to have to do is, is see where the bottom equals zero. In order to do that, you're probably going to have to cancel or, or factor. And so. You look at the top, and on the top, I see a GCF. Both of those have an X, but I also, I don't like that negative in the front. So I'm going to do a GCF with negative X. So think about negative X times what? Negative X times X minus 3. I just factored the top using a GCF. Now on the bottom, X squared minus 7X plus 12, I'm going to factor that one using the easy trinomial pattern. This is an easy try. Easy try looks like this. I need two numbers that multiply to 12 and add up to negative seven. You should be getting better at this because we've, we've done it several times in the last couple of weeks. Negative four, negative three, very good. Now we factored the bottom using the easy try pattern, okay? So it's a lot easier to see where the bottom equals zero now Okay, but we also might notice that x minus 3 would cancel out. x minus 3 would cancel out, right? So I can see that the number 4 is going to make 0 on the bottom, and so is the number 3, but the difference is the, the second one cancels out, all right? So when you go back to your rules, we're looking for where the bottom equals 0, but it's going to be a hole on the one that it cancels, okay? So here's what we do. 
we're trying to find holes in vertical asymptotes. So I know there is a vertical asymptote at the one that does not cancel, x equals 4. x equals 4. There is a hole at x equals 3. All right, the one that cancels. Now, with a hole, we technically have to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit more. I look back at this problem when I canceled it out. If you canceled out that x minus three like that, you'd still have negative x over x minus four. We simplified rational expressions a couple of sections ago. That's what it would be simplified to. But when we're looking at the whole and x equals three, think about what we'd have if x equals three. If x equals 3, that's going to be negative 3 over 3 minus 4. That's negative 3 over negative 1. That's positive 3. So when we plug in 3, we get 3. So that whole, we can, we can write as a point 3 comma 3. Plug in x equal 3, get out equal 3. That's where the whole is. Vertical asymptote is going to be a vertical line. A whole is going to be a point. So next is horizontal asymptote. That's where you have to look at the degrees. So remember the degree, the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom, it was uh, this number that I circled over here, right? This number and this number. So if we look at this problem, I'm looking at the biggest exponent here is two and the biggest exponent here is two. Two equals two. So the degree of the top equals the degree of the bottom. 2 equals 2. What was that again? Look back at your notes. Degree of the top equals degree of the bottom. I've got to divide the two leading coefficients. Divide the two leading coefficients. That's just the numbers in the front. That would be negative 1 and positive 1. The numbers in the front of the polynomials so we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one divided by negative one is negative one now what's significant about this information is this would this would help me draw the graph if i had to graph this thing that's what i would do all right now they get faster the more you do the faster this is going to go so let's do another one Okay, this one, number three, we can factor the top, I think, x plus four and x minus one, but nothing cancels out. Nothing cancels out in this case. So when I look at the bottom and say, where does the bottom equal zero? Well, it just equals zero at zero. Not positive three, that's not going to make zero. That's negative 3 times 0 equals 0. So I get the bottom equals 0 at 0. Um, but nothing cancels out, so there's no hole. So I'm going to say vertical asymptote at x equals 0, hole none, because nothing canceled out. Horizontal asymptote, all right, now remember, horizontal asymptote, you have to look at the degrees. Degree of the top, degree of the bottom. Degree of the top is 2. Degree of the bottom is 1. Okay, remember what it is. 2 and 1. It's not, it's not the first one. Degree of the top equals degree of the bottom. It's, it's, it's oblique, right? It's oblique because the degree of the top is 1 more than the degree of the bottom. All right, so they didn't ask me to do oblique. We're not going to do oblique. We're just going to say none. It's not horizontal. It's oblique. It's diagonal. So we can worry about that later. Maybe we're not worrying about that today. Let's move on. I think you're going to have to factor stuff to, to figure out if stuff cancels. X squared minus 16 is a difference of squares pattern. x minus 3 times x plus 1, nothing cancels, all right? So 
basically what we're looking for is what makes the bottom equal zero. So I like to look at it this way. You know, what makes this equal zero? Three, right? And what makes this equal zero? Since neither one of those are going to cancel, they're both vertical asymptotes. There's actually two vertical asymptotes here. Nothing cancels, so there are no holes, none. Yeah, I mean, if you, as long as you just space it out, a, a comma, whatever, space it. I just need to know there's two of them. Yeah, yeah, please do. Please put x equals. So horizontal asymptote. Look at the degrees. Degree of the top equals. So right, when the degrees equal, you have to divide lead coefficient divide by lead coefficient. Y equals one. All right. See how it gets easier as you go. You see more examples. It's just the same thing over and over again. Okay. All right. So this one, those X's don't cancel. Don't cancel those X's. They don't cancel. Okay. Nothing cancels. We can see what makes zero on the bottom is zero. People always get tricked by that. When they always say like negative one or something like that, but, but what makes zero is zero. That's your vertical asymptote. Holes. None. <laughs> Just wait. When we have to graph it, it'll get a little bit harder. <laughs> Okay, horizontal asymptote, one equals one. You look at the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. When when they're equal, that's when you have to divide, right? Negative one over one, y equals negative one. All right, so those are, the, those are the asymptotes and holes. Those are just kind of the boundaries. What we're trying to get to is where we can graph, all right? So... Notice on number nine, it says identify holes, vertical asymptotes, and uh, vertical and horizontal. Um, then sketch the graph. We're trying to sketch the graph is what we're trying to do. Okay. So um, let's see. Whoops. That's not what I want. Come on, buddy. Scoot over here. Okay, so check out number nine, what number nine looks like. This is what we drew in the last lesson, right? It's the same type thing, but the key is we have to figure out where the asymptotes are. It's going to be really hard to draw that unless we, I mean, we can just start plugging stuff in, but let's let's think about the, the holes and the asymptotes and, and whatnot. So on the top, I see a GCF of three. We can take out a, we can take out a three. And look at that GCF, but nothing cancels, right? Nothing, nothing cancels. So that means no holes. We can look at where the bottom equals zero. The bottom equals zero at X equals four. That is a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. So guess what? We're going to draw a vertical line right here at X equals four. Draw that in there. Don't skip it. Desmos doesn't put that in there because it's invisible. It's not really there. It's a boundary line. All right, Desmos doesn't draw it in there because it's invisible. It's just a boundary. But if we're drawing it, we need it to just use, all right? Holes, there are none. But then we're gonna look at horizontal. And so remember what horizontal does. Degree of the top is one, degree of the bottom is one. Good. Divide the leading coefficients. Y equals three. Okay. So Y equals three, horizontal through three. That's this right here. And so you can kind of look at the graph over there on Desmos and you can kind of see the two boundaries where they should be, right? And my double boomerang shape is kind of fitting in those two boundaries. And so the rest of this is we need to draw a sketch. So you would make a table, I guess. 
and start plugging junk in, like plug in zero and see what you get. You're going to get like negative nine over four, uh, negative four or whatever. Or if you have Desmos, you're just going to click around and find some points. Sure. 2.25. Zero comma 2.25 is right there. And here's another point, three comma zero. Three comma zero is right there. So remember when we talked about symmetry? I think the easiest way to do this is to think about symmetry. All right. If you're looking at, at this point right here, all right, think about how far it is from the middle. Up three and over one to get to the middle. Not the origin, the middle of my asymptotes. Up three and over one puts me in the middle. So if I go over one and up three, use symmetry, that's the point on your boomerang. All right. Then there's there's this one. Remember that was at 2.25. So you'd have to go over four and up like 0.75, I guess. So up 0.75 and over four is going to put me like right there. That's going to be good enough, I think, for now. Oops, that's not good enough. You see what I did wrong? Yeah, you can't you can't hit that boundary. If you hit that boundary, you get you get shocked. So flat to the asymptote, hit the dots. Vertical. Ah man. Okay. <laughs> Operation, yeah, I like that. All right, so you can see by Desmos, that's that's what it looks like, but we did it by hand. All right, now we're going to mix it up a little bit because I think uh, let's do number 10 next. Instead of doing odds, we're going to do number 10, okay? Number 10, not, not number 11 or whatever. Do number 10. So first thing you want to do is factor, see if anything cancels out. So I see a GCF on the top. Leaves me with x plus 2. And on the bottom, I see an easy trinomial. x plus 2, x plus 1. Now, there's two different things that make 0. I see negative 2 and negative 1 make 0. But notice how one of those factors cancels out. Do you see how the, the x plus 2 is going to cancel out? That means it's a whole this time right? So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at the one that does not cancel out, x equals negative 1. We're going to have a hole at the one that does cancel out. And what's weird is, okay, it's going to be the point negative 2 comma something. So what we would look at is when we cancel this out right here, what you would have left is negative two on the top and x plus one on the bottom. All right? So basically you would plug in negative two. Plug in that number into right here, negative two. So negative two over negative two plus one is negative one equals positive two. Okay? Positive two. When I plug that number into the reduced version i get positive two there is a hole there you were right okay so check it out vertical asymptote at negative one we just did that it's right here not ready for that yet vertical asymptote right here okay hole at negative two comma two watch what i'm going to do I'm going to put not a point, but I'm going to put like an open circle just to show that that's not really there. Remember when we show a filled in circle is equals, but an open circle is not equals. That's kind of what I'm doing here. So we can look at our boomerang shape. And what's weird is Desmos doesn't show you the asymptotes and holes. You can't see where the hole is, but there's actually not anything on this graph right here. And what it has to do with, basically, is you know how when you try to divide by zero, you're going to get an error? If you go one divided by zero, you're going to get some kind of an error on your calculator, 
all right? So if I do one divided by two minus two, I'm gonna get an error on my calculator. It's not gonna work, all right? And that's, that's what's happening in this graph. When you've got zero on the bottom with these two numbers, negative two and negative one, it's a problem. It's an error. It's not going to work and it's not really there, all right? So let's look at our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so horizontal asymptote. And that has to do with the degree, right? So we look at the degree of the top is one and the degree of the bottom is two. Degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom. Remember what happened there? When the degree of the top was less than the degree of the bottom, it's just zero. Okay, y equals zero. So horizontal asymptote right here at zero. Okay, so if we didn't have Desmos, again, we would make a table and plug in something like zero. If I plug in something like zero, I'm gonna get minus four over two is negative two. I think zero negative two is one of my points. And I can do that without Desmos. You can do that without, you just plug in zero into the equation. Or, you know, click around here. There it is, zero, negative two. I don't know if we have any other points, but, but zero, negative two is right there. Click around, find other stuff if you want. Uh, five comma negative one third. Five comma negative one third is right there. We can use symmetry. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to be one third right there. I don't know. You feel like that's enough? Be careful. I'm not very good at hitting these dots. Make sure you don't electrocute yourself. Okay, there we go. Let's do one more, and it's going to be number 12. Okay, number 12. I think number 11 is, it's maybe easier than the other. So I'm, I'm trying to do some harder ones. Um, number 12. I see a GCF. And on the bottom, I see a difference of squares problem. X plus 2, X minus 2. Okay. See how the x plus 2 cancels? That means that one is going to be a whole, and the other one is going to be a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote is the one that does not cancel x equals 2. So here we go, x equals 2, vertical asymptote right here. The whole is the one that does cancel, negative 2. The whole is going to be negative two comma whatever we get when we plug it in. Now you can't plug it into the original problem because that's going to give you zero on the bottom. You can only plug into the part after it's been canceled out. So after canceling, you'd have a negative three on the top and an X minus two on the bottom after you cancel that thing out. So plug in negative two, you've got, negative two minus two. That's negative three over negative four, which is three fourths, yuck. So we have a hole at negative two comma three fourths. Negative two comma three fourths. Negative two comma three fourths. I'm gonna put a hole right there. Yeah, that's tough. Now we got to go to the horizontal asymptote. That has to do with the degrees. Degree of the top is one, 
degree of the bottom is 2. When I've got 1 is less than 2, top is less than bottom, 0. y equals 0. Good. So these are my boundary lines. And when you when you graph on Desmos, you should be able to see that, yeah, that does look right. Zero and two, vertical at two, horizontal at zero. It's not going to show you that, and it's not going to show you the whole, but but that's pretty good anyway. So let's see, what's that point? Zero comma 1.5. I'm going to have a point at zero comma 1.5. If you do symmetry, that's what I would do. I mean, you can click around and find more points, but but it's two over and 1.5 down. So 1.5 down and two over is going to put me a point right there. I can even do that whole. It's one, two, three, four, and three fourths down. So three fourths down and one, two, three, four. It's just not going to be a hole over there. It's going to be six comma negative three fourths. I bet if I go over here, six comma is probably six comma negative three fourths. Yeah, there we go, right there. Six comma negative three fourths. Got it. Looking good. Draw your curve. Don't shock yourself. I think that's good for today.